Thank you. Kathleen, can we get a roll call? Commissioner Blanco. Here. Commissioner Hernandez. Here. Commissioner Lopez. Here. Chair Dickerson. Here. And there we go. Um, okay, we have, uh, we need the approval of the Planning Commission meetings of October 2nd. I move that we approve the minutes for the October 2nd meeting. Do we hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Public comment period. Each member of the audience may address the commission on any subject within the commission's business. Each member of the audience and each subject is limited to discussion of three minutes or is otherwise directed by the chair. These are for items not agendized. Do we have anybody in the audience that would like to pontif pontificate about the universe? No? <coughs> then we will move on to the consent calendar. Uh, the consent calendar is approved with one motion. These items are read only on request of commission members. Should anyone, including members of the public, wish to discuss or disapprove any item, it must be dropped from the blanket motion and considered as a separate item. It is my understanding we have a recusal? Yes, I will be recusing myself from this item. All right. Uh, does she need to get up and walk out for the no for the vote? All right. Uh, having taken a look at the consent calendar, do we hear a motion? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent calendar of today's date. Okay. A second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? The motion carries. And we reseat Commissioner Hernandez. That's right. Okay, the public hearing. Uh, we'll start off with item number two, McDonald's plan development permit at 1710 South Broadway. We hear from staff. Good evening, Commissioners. Brian Hostetter, Planning Manager. I would like to introduce a new member of our team, well, new-ish. Alejandra Alvarez is a new assistant planner for the city. Alejandra. And Alejandra has been interning with us. That's why I say new-ish. She's been with the team interning uh, since her graduation at Cal Poly in city and regional planning. And... Um, applied for our position for assistant planner and um, we're happy to have her on the team so she's going to be presenting uh, this project number two on the agenda tonight welcome thank you All right. good evening members of the commission my name is Alejandra Alvarez like Ryan mentioned um, assistant planner and I'll be presenting on the project for McDonald's located at 1710 uh, South Broadway the site is located at the corner of South Broadway, East New Love, and McClellan Street. The site is currently occupied by McDonald's, and the intent of this project is to demolish the existing building and build a new facility to have the same purpose, which is to serve as a McDonald's fast food restaurant. The site is surrounded by commercial uses, uh, such as Smart and Final and the discount mall to the east, a dental office, restaurant, and motel to the north, enterprise car rental to the south, and multifamily residential to the west. The site itself is within the general commercial with a plan development overlay district and is part of the Entrada specific plan. As you can see, to the east and north, you also have a general commercial uh, plan development overlay district. To the far east, you have a medium density residential district, and to the west, you have a high density residential district. Here you see the current site. There are two curb cuts on South Broadway with two exits and one entrance point. On East New Love Drive, there is one entrance and exit point. On McClellan Street, there are two entrances and one exit point. The existing layout has also, um, also has a one-lane drive-through uh, that begins on the east side of the site and wraps around the entire building with the intent of exiting again on McClellan Street. Um, the drive-through does intercept with pedestrian access to the dining portion of the building on the east side of the building. Current parking consists of all diagonal parking spots. ADA parking is located along South Broadway and the landscaping along the drive-through portion um, 
contains a handful of trees. And there is more landscaping along the ADA parking um, on, uh, along South Broadway, as well as a few trees within the parking lot. Here you see the proposed site. Though the building itself is being proposed to be rebuilt in relatively the same spot on the site, uh, the project does include reducing the access to the site along South Broadway and McClellan Street to one on each side um, and keeping the access point to the site on East New Love Drive. The new drive through layout includes two lanes um, and they converge into one and it does not wrap around the entire building. Parking will now be provided along the south side of the building and that area will now contain the ADA parking spots and will allow closer accessibility to the dine-in portion of the building. The landscape will be enhanced along the drive through that borders uh, East New Love Drive. Um, it will also be enhanced along South Broadway and uh, new planters will be added throughout the parking lot. The following are pictures of the existing site. Here we have the existing building from South Broadway. One thing to know about the proposed new building and will be shown in upcoming slides is a change in style of the facade. Um, it is going to be a more modern style um, with various materials on that. Um, as you can see, these are the current ADA parking spots with the drive through behind them. Here we have the drive through looking from East New Love Drive towards South Broadway. In the proposed plan, as mentioned prior, the landscape will be enhanced. Here we are looking at the rear of the building looking from McClellan Street. As you can see now, the drive through window is on the left side of the building, and that is where the customer parking is being proposed. Here we have the parking lot layout. The project proposes additional landscape planters and a mix of diagonal and straight parking spots as well. Here we have elevation renderings that depict the new building style and materials being used on the facade. The new building proposes metal panels on the top half of the building, a mixture of stucco, uh, stucco and wood accents on the bottom half of the building. The use of these materials and colors do align with what is mentioned within the Entrada specific plan. If you would like a closer look at these materials, the applicant has provided uh, those materials for you. With that, uh, this concludes the staff presentation. Staff's recommendation is that the Planning Commission, by motion, approve plan development permit PD 2019-006. Uh, the applicant is available for further questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alejandra. Um, have there been any um, um, communications uh, by the applicant to um, commission members? No? Okay. Um, do you have any questions of staff at this time? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A real quick question. At the drive through sometimes the, there's an extended wait. Where, where do people pull off to the side to wait for, for um, uh, their food if, if it's not, if it's taking a little longer? I believe that question can be better answered by the applicant. Okay. Commissioner, I think, I think it's the front two parking spaces uh, that border Broadway. Probably that's it. I mean, that's probably what it's going to be. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, and if you could come up to the podium, sir, and answer that question. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Ed McGrady, and the address is 5674 Shiloh Court it's in Orchid. Um, I'm the director of operations for McDonald's and it doesn't really show it on that drawing but there's a third window where we would pull cars to the third window and then if that spot is full then there's oh, also see. another spot in front of the store. Right. <clears throat> okay. 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 There they are. All right. Thank uh, you. Other that questions? Of staff. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> Is there an existing sign that's out there now, an existing post sign 
I, I, I just don't remember if there was a post sign out front and if that one's intended to stay, if there is one, I guess. There is an existing sign along South Broadway. Um, they will need sign permits to um, permit that there. Yeah. And, and we know that that's staying or? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now, I have a question. Will the McDonald's be closed down during the construction period? Uh, they are completely demoing the building, so yes, it will be closed down during the rebuild of the building. And I don't know if this is a question for the applicant. Do you, do you have an estimate of how long that's going to take? So uh, my name is Robert Priest. I'm Design UA. We're the architect and engineer for the project. Um, so a couple of quick questions, and I'll kind of just circle through. Um, so Commissioner Lopez, for yours. So there's a third window on the new construction projects that we have, um, and a lot of the reason behind that was to keep staff in the store to be able to bring larger orders to that third window. Mm -hmm. And then if for some reason they need to, you, there's two spots on the west side. You can see them on the front where we can roll around the corner. It's called a roll forward. And we can park two cars there for a really large orders so that um, staff doesn't have to cross streets or intersections or anything like that to bring you your, your food or your larger orders. Um, as far as closing the store, yes, um, we're scraping it all the way to the ground. So typical rebuilds on these, um, again, depending on utilities and everything else, tend to take about three months, um, depending on the contractor and how we do that. But three months is typically our close down time um, and then reopen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Further questions? Um, I have a question of staff, um, and probably um, Mr. Bias there, um, Bias. Um, I, I do have spent an inordinate amount of time in this McDonald's every morning. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, my, well, my wife would certainly kill me. She probably is watching this now. Um, <laughs> but uh, my concern when I was looking this over is uh, pushing the exit of, uh, of the drive-through onto New Love. Um, that, particular, that particular corner, um, I mean, there's just a lot of traffic there. And then stacking up what is probably going to be left-hand turns on that from Broadway, especially you have the traffic coming across New Love from the west going going east. I mean, there's just a lot of traffic, whereas keeping it on McClellan, um, it was relatively sleepy, and frankly, the vast majority of traffic was McDonald's traffic. I am, I am very concerned about the about the amount of traffic that we're going to be pushing onto New Love so close to that corner. Um, have you taken a look at that at all? Has any traffic studies been done? <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Chair. We did, engineering staff did look at that. It's an existing um, driveway. Um, the configuration for this for this new McDonald's is a little different, so it'll be, it has the tendency for vehicles, as you just mentioned, to go out in a higher frequency at that intersection. Yeah. However, uh, there are other outlets for vehicles to exit in the event that somebody is stopped at the driveway, as we all know, and they could probably attest to this, that drives throughs the circulation is, is, is quite, quite uh, frequent. And um, ideally, it's that vehicle that's turning left that wants to go northbound on Broadway is, correct me if I'm wrong, that is your, that is your concern. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Because right now, the way it's configured, there is a, um, there's a cement lip um, that curls around. So basically, nobody exits from, from that driveway. That driveway is almost exclusively an, uh, coming in, almost nobody goes out because of the direction of the, the, uh, the parking. So it, so it curls around, and of course the, the drive-through is on the other side, and then it exits McClellan, and that's really the way it channels all of that, all that traffic. With this, virtually everybody, because anybody who's gonna go on a Broadway 
is probably not going to drive all the way down here and you know to the southern side of that thing and then get onto Broadway. They're just going to try to exit as quickly as possible. So you're looking at almost 100% of your your drive-through traffic going that direction. I, I believe technically it's it's illegal for them to turn out because there's they'll, they'll be double the uh, the, the striping that's situated there because it's so close to the intersection it's it's illegal for for the left a solution <laughs> how are you going to enforce that <laughs> right a, a solution to that well enforcement cops may go get coffee there in the morning um or what have you but um a solution to that could be the establish or placing a sign at the end at the at the uh at the driveway right only i think that would be a, a it's signage is helpful and um, I mean, quite frankly, if 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 there is if there are vehicles there, people will. I for one, if, if I'm I'm behind one, if I'm behind somebody, you're ahead of me. Say, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go depending where I'm on. If I want to go northbound on Broadway, I'm probably gonna I'm not gonna wait for you. I'm probably gonna go, I'm likely gonna go through the through the uh, through the parking lot, get onto Broadway, and then head north. Um, but it'll vary. It's. But my suggestion would be to add, add some signage, and I don't know if the right. applicant is, is open to that. Yeah. And, and you know, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll ask the applicant, but I'm just saying, I, I, I think you guys are, are just asking for a ton of trouble here because people will generally, regardless if there's a sign there or not, turn. And then those people that are impatient, maybe they'll go to the southern area, and hopefully they're making their way northbound, but if they're still wanting to go southbound, then they're going to scoot out and immediately cross two lanes of Broadway traffic to get to that uh, to get to that uh, U-turn on uh, you know on um, a New Love um, to get back going southbound. I I just think you are asking for problems there. But let's go ahead and ask the applicant about that. Sure. Um, so a couple of things went to the site design on this one. Um, we did look at the site and how it is, and there's a lot of kind of movement going around there, a lot of drive entrances coming in there. So one of the first things we want to do was limit, start reducing those. Right now, like there's five access points onto the site. So basically getting it down to the three. Um, do understand kind of your, your idea about that one. And we looked at the idea of possibly closing that north driveway. Mm -hmm. um, the big reason we don't, and we really wanted to keep that, was really access to the site. So if you're coming down South Broadway, um, a lot of people now coming down, that's the only entrance they know. They don't know the one back on mm -hmm. McClellan. Um, and given the number of lanes on Broadway, um, we felt that that was kind of a crucial entry that we have to leave there. Um, as far as signage that's, that's on That's a double-edged sword, isn't it? I mean, the it reason is. you want that there is because of all the traffic, and the reason that we don't want it there is because of all the traffic. Because the traffic trying to leave it versus yeah. the traffic getting in there. Yeah. Um, when it comes to signage, we're, we're open to talking to staff about whether we can say, hey, look, this is going to be a right only out of there. Try to limit people leaving that and trying to make that left to get to that intersection. Um, one of the other things we did on this site design versus what's there currently is everything's majority of it's double lane, um, which it's not today. And really what the intent is for that is just as cars are leaving, they're more likely to start using the other drive aisles on the south just because they don't have to circle the whole site now if they back out of their spot or they leave the drive through in order to get to one of those southern entrances. So now with it double lane traffic both ways, they can easily get down to the southern ones um, and either exit out on McClellan or exit out on a Broadway going northbound. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, that north one, it's, it's kind of a double edge, but um, I think where we're at is the best solution for what's there compared to what's there today and um, trying to make the access onto the site for customers as easy as possible. Um, that's one of the things we try to, our new image and what we're doing is really about the customer experience, whether you're going through the drive through or you're coming to eat in the restaurant. It's to make it as little pain as possible. And the one today is not necessarily the best version. Yeah. Well, so, and, you know, and I, and I agree that it, I mean, it's, I think this is a good thing that it's being remodeled and Rebuilt. I mean, that that's good, and you're going to redo the parking lot. I, I, I'm all for that. I, I am just very, very concerned that you're pushing traffic onto that new love. And I, and I got to say, a couple of signs does not alleviate my my concern substantially. Um, pushing, and I, I think 
I mean, just from my own experience, and that's pretty substantial. Um, I, I mean, I think it's got to be 90% of traffic right now exits onto McClellan, and then and then gets on to New Love. But at least it's further back, and you know that sort of thing. If you're pushing, so 90% of that is is trying to scoot out, you know, on that, uh, you know, onto New Love, close to Broadway. I. Well, I just see a lot of I see a lot of stacking problems. And I also see a lot of potential accidents. I, I think I think it's a safety issue, um, and I'm just like I said, I'm just not sure that that a couple of signs really, in my mind, do it. But anyway, we will um, we'll cross that bridge down down the road here. Yes. In this, when you're going the two lanes through the drive through and then you're exiting, does that continue to be two lanes or is that landscaping taking part of, does it become one lane? Uh, as you're tr going up north, okay. you make a left. Is that a one lane or is that two lanes? It becomes a one lane. When you're going north in front of the store? The, the two, the two, two lane. lanes that then curve around. Does it become uh, one lane? On the drive through lane itself? Yes. So on the drive through lane with the third window the way it works, um, as you're, you can see the painted kind of wait here line, kind of mm -hmm. just on the exit. Yep. That's a double, it's it's one way traffic, but it, it's we call it a bypass. So as a car is waiting at that stop line, at that third window, waiting for their order to come through, if the car behind them, their order in theory gets delivered first, they can pull around that car that's waiting for their food, and then they can make a left or right, depending on what they're gonna do to exit that drive through and then the car at the third window, um, the window set 10 feet back from that line, so that once they get their food, they don't just zoom out, they, wait, they go forward to that limit line and then can make a left or right, again, depending on making sure there's another, not another car coming past them on the bypass. Yeah, and I, I, that's where I was trying to understand whether there was gonna continue to be two lanes because the person behind maybe get, got their food, but then they still might have to wait for the person waiting at the window for a large order whereas the mcdonald's by fessler it goes into the drive-thru but then you're able to exit out to the right um, so i don't know if that's a possibility instead of having the landscaping there just make an exit but i don't know if that's feasible uh, that exit right now on the north is just one lane in one lane out so yeah, if we could work with staff, if it gets to that point, and you can make two lanes going out, so one's, if it goes by the bypass, they can just turn and wait. But then I think it's making almost worse, like the other commissioner's talking about, Commissioner Dixon, where now you have two cars trying to make right. turns out on New Live. So I think at that point, we're better off keeping it the what it is today, one in, one out, and then let the cars that are in the drive through figure out just, hey, I got my food, I'm going to go first, or while you're waiting for yours. Other questions? No. Of, Mr. Yeah. Chair, um, li listening to the discussion, it's, and, and this is uh, uh, obviously it's, um, something that's, that, that's something that the applicant will have to consider. What if, what if we propose to, because I checked on, on, on the area, but it is illegal to make that movement, the left turn movement. It is illegal. So the, so the, the, the movements, if, if they're leaving that driveway, they have to go, they have to go, uh, Right. Well, they don't because every morning I watch it happen. I mean, you, I sit in that line. And if and a police officer is there, if a police officer is there and, and they see that movement, they're going to get a ticket. It's, it's, I'm just stating the fact that it, that okay. is an illegal movement. We can again. Uh, uh, it's, it's open to the to the applicant is to establish the signage so that it's very clear. Monitor it for a period of 12 months in the event that. That there's any kind of accident activity, then we go to the next step as far as perhaps, and I'll, I'll go as far as maybe closing the driveway or limiting it, lim limiting it in a design such that it is right out only with a physical improvement. There you go. It's uh, uh, like the like the Starbucks on Main Street. Well, couldn't couldn't we basically mm -hmm. do that? before waiting to see whether or not you have horrible accidents. I mean, if we're, if we're just concerned about it, 
I mean, couldn't we put that as a condition? Yeah, it is open. Is open to that, to, to a physical um, improvement at the. And, and what do you mean by that as a physical improvement? What would what what would that? Concrete improvements. Right now, there's no. It's it's just an open driveway. If you if you design it as such so that it's a right out only, so that that's mm. the obvious turning movement, then um, then that's that would be the improvement as such. Mm. Again, if the applicant is, is open to that to, to alleviate your concern. Okay. Does that mean putting in kind of that median like it's there at Starbucks and Subway, where you sort of force people to go right? Although I know that that's been pretty difficult to maneuver through there. People have been hitting that forever. So it does discourage you from going left pretty well, but it's, I think it hasn't worked maybe as well as everybody had hoped. In terms of Correct. just, it's been hit so much. Correct. I, again, I mentioned it is illegal for that left turn movement. If we apprise the police of, of this and hey, can we monitor that? The police, the, the police department is, is, is very good at, at monitoring. If, if with assistance for that. All right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> thank you. We'll probably be calling me back here. In just a uh, no worries. Um, let's go ahead and open this uh, meeting to the public. Uh, do we have any any notification or anybody wants to speak? Okay, then then we will go ahead and, uh, sir. I'm sorry. I just had you. You go ahead and go back up there. Any additional questions for the uh, applicant? My commission members, no. And is there anything you would like to, any additional statements you'd like to make? Uh, yeah, just overall, a couple things. One, um, if you have interest in any of the materials, we have some samples. No, we put them on board, but they just came in. So um, I can go through those if you're interested in that. Um, and then two, just talking about the site. Um, Obviously, we're, it's McDonald's. We've been in the city for a while. Um, the operators of the store are very tied in with the city. Um, they do want to invest and invest in this property. Um, so um, between what they're doing and what McDonald's as a corporation is doing is really just trying to reinvent kind of the brand from how all of us knew it when we were younger. Um, and it's come a long way to where we are. Um, that's a lot of the vision that you see today and um, the design of the building in front of you to the site, to the food, to the service, to, and Ed can talk about that as far as how the staff's even being trained. Um, it'll, when this reopens, it'll be not your typical McDonald's that you've seen or been in before. Um, so um, thank the staff for getting to this point. Um, I know Carol and Alejandra have helped us tons getting here. So thank them and then thank you guys for tonight. And um, any other questions, feel free, shoot them at me. Sir, would would would, uh, would you guys be willing to uh, modify that uh, that exit so then it basically forced people to to turn right? Yeah, I, I think overall we we'll look at it whatever kind of engineering and staff wants to do. Um, like we said, the way it is today, there's not a barrier. People are used to using it. We do understand based on the configuration of the site, it's probably going to add a little more load on there, um, and if customers do increase police revenue so that's always a good thing too um, people only make the mistake once um, I think overall the site flow is better than it is today so if that's our one sticking point then yeah we have we don't have a problem trying to limit or add more signage or even add a physical barrier to start to push you right a little bit um, our big intent is just still making sure that cars can come in that um, that's the reason that why we're leaving the driveway where it is today um, and I think over time people are just going to start to know the site and know it better and start to use the southern driveways more and have a little easier access to get to those. Um, I know the way it is right now, a lot of people are going out to McClellan because the drive through dumps out there and there's not an easy way to turn around to get back to Broadway. Um, now it's going to be a lot easier when you come out of that drive through with your food just to head south and exit onto Broadway out there and continue north. Yeah. Um, or if you're going south, they know it's going to be hard to make that turn out of there. It's going to stack up on New Love, and they're just going to get used to going back around like they always have. And, um, and you know, it's, it's your it's your business model. But I, I would just I would say this to you as as a customer, um, it is it is right now going to be much easier for me to go out of McClellan onto New Love and then have my choice of going north or south on Broadway. Sure. With this new configuration, you are basically choosing people. They're, they're going to have to go 
north on Broadway or make that you know scurry across two lanes of traffic to the to the turn to make the u-turn um, or circle the entire the entire piece of property to get on McClellan to then get on to New Love and thing. It, your assumption that it's going to be easier, from my experience, is incorrect. Sure. Um, and so, um, now once again, you know, people will get used to doing what they're doing, but but it 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 will be less convenient than than what the way you've got it situated now. No, understand. Um, and then really just again customers it's about your impact on the drive through and how you use it and not that we want to make it harder for you um hopefully the the way the model is the service times there's not going to be lines everything moves a lot quicker for you to get out and not battling traffic in that parking lot um and one of the big things again which i didn't touch on necessarily right now that building that's there we call it a reverse building where you kind of have to flip all operations inside you circle the whole building around it's a lot of the drive-through components and everything on that kind of west side on Broadway. Um, and again, one of the things is image. It's, it's, this is one of the main things you see coming into Santa Maria. So we don't want you looking at a bunch of drive-through stacking and everything on the back from your main street on Broadway. So we're trying to just to increase the image of McDonald's and increase kind of what it looks like coming into the city or okay. leaving the city as you're going south. So. Um, just one other piece kind of to it. Obviously, we look at everything as a totality, but um, some things take a back seat, not a back seat, but are a little less imperative than the other. So. Okay. Any further questions of the applicant? No? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for comments. No? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think I agree with you on that on that exit there. I, a physical barrier would probably be best. I don't know if it's that same type of island that's out there in front of Starbucks and over there, because that's maybe, I don't know, I was asking Commissioner Blanco those delineators that, and I don't know if something like that would be possible, just uh, it keeps people from turning left. And, and, and I'm guilty of doing that same movement at Fessler and, yeah. uh, and, uh, and Broadway. So I, I do understand it, and, but I do applaud the applicant because it is a much better, uh, much better circulation on site. So thank you for that, and um, if we can just take care of that, I think I think it's a winner. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think um, you know addressing that concern. If it's a very straightforward um, change to the plan to address those potential lefts out of there, I think that's definitely worth looking into. Um, other than that, I think it makes a lot of this is a huge improvement over what's out there now. I just, when I first saw the layout there, I couldn't believe that you had to wrap around the whole building to, to do a takeout order and, and then try to get over to the restaurant across that, you know, the drive through area. So um, this makes a lot more sense. Um, you know, um, I think if, I think that would be the one improvement that potentially, if it was amenable to everybody and it made some sense. Uh, yeah, I think the raised island may may really be the only way to do it. Um, you know, if we could make it a little bit more contrasting, would be good because I think that's one of the main things is people either don't see it or just for whatever reason. Oh, oh, there it is! Boom, you hit it. Uh, maybe just so it's not an eyesore and doesn't become an issue. You know, take a look and see what can be done. Maybe a little bit differently than was done in front of Subway and Starbucks on Main Street, but um, that may be just a good a good middle ground to addressing the circulation but otherwise i think it's, it's a nice looking layout um i agree it's a, it's going to be a tremendous improvement um i applaud you guys for scraping the building and and doing a a, a new building there that's that's great i i wish more um, um chain types of, of locations and and uh, and businesses would uh, would upgrade their facilities in this manner so uh, I applaud you for it um, I apologize for making life just a little bit more difficult for you with that uh, left hand turn um, I promise you it was not because of our discussion about McRibs although I was still seething about that um, so um, 
Yeah, I, I would I would certainly be willing to uh, to uh, um, support this as long as we have uh, uh, with staff a, a a physical barrier that that actually forces people to uh, turn right um, and keeps them from turning left um, as a condition as an additional condition. Um, other than that, I think everything looks good on it. And with that. Um, we are going to need a, um, a motion. I move that the Planning Commission approve Plan Development Permit PD 2019-0006. Um, with the additional condition? With the additional condition, as discussed. Okay. Do I hear a second? Mr. Chairman, I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Good luck, gentlemen. All right, uh, moving on to number three, Minami Park Telecom Plan Development Permit at 601 West Enos Drive. Can we hear from staff? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Carol Zizanheni, and I will be presenting the Minami Park Telecom uh, application at 601 West Enos Drive at Minami Park. So the proposed telecommunications facility um, is a co-location on an existing um, light, lighting sconce uh, right next to a softball field. So the Minami Park, for those who are unfamiliar, is um, just south of West Enos Drive. It actually um, goes up along South Depot Street and borders uh, with West Battles. So the site is in a um, public facilities zoning district with uh, residential. Oh, open space, excuse me. Open space uh, zoning district with a, a single family residential to the east. And um, right now it's a, a vacant uh, agricultural field, but there is a single family residential to the west as well. So this is a view of the site plan with a, um, an aerial image just to provide some context. So the proposed facility is um, located right over here on uh, this uh, lighting sconce uh, at first base at the on the softball field with an uh, excuse me a in equipment enclosure right next to the basketball the half basketball fields or half basketball court and a tennis court right along here so the the design is proposed to incorporate integrate into the existing chain link fencing with uh, uh, green uh, material that matches oh yes with uh, roof slats and um, uh, the kind of vinyl windscreen around it that is commonly seen in, in tennis courts so here is a view of the elevations looking northeast as you can see um, this star is where the photo was taken Here's the, the softball field here, and then just off to the right is a, uh, the enclosure. One thing I uh, forgot to mention on the previous slide is that the enclosure is proposed to be screened with ex some of the existing shrubbery that's seen around the tennis courts and the basketball courts um, with uh, irrigation incorporated as well. So here is another view looking from the parking lot, um, looking south. Um, the, there's a note here, not visible, that's the equipment enclosure. It's not visible from this vantage point, but here is the um, proposed antenna arrays on top of that lighting sconce there. And then another view looking northwest from that star off by the playground over here. In the, in the background you can see the uh, screened equipment enclosure. There's not landscaping shown in this, in this visual. However, that will be incorporated in, in real life. So with that, uh, that concludes staff's presentation. Um, staff re staff's recommendation is that the Planning Commission by motion approve Plan Development Permit PD 2019-0003. Did, did you have a picture looking east? So this is looking northeast. The applicant did not provide a photo sim um, looking from, from Depot Street here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any disclosure by commissioners uh, for any communication for T-Mobile? No? 
Okay. Okay. Um, then uh, how about qu questions for staff from the commission? Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, so this is a city facility, right? Minami Park is a city facility? Correct. It's done by the city of Santa Maria. City of Santa Maria. Is, is, as part of this, is there going to be a lease agreement with the applicant? Yes, that is correct. So, there, there's a condition of approval, I believe, um, that discusses um, the, the, the process after planning commission approval um, that requires that the city council um, approve the, the lease disclosure agreement. Which includes compensation and agreement for maintenance and access and everything else? I, I believe that covers it. And Public Works can weigh in on this. Do you, do you know what the question is, David, or did you just blurt out the word yes? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it's the utilities sure. division that, that sets up these agreements for, the, for, the, um, uh, for these uh, antennas that are on public property. But yes, it's, it's, it's an agreement as far as compensation, uh, maintenance, and everything that's included with the, with the tower. So it's, it's, it's all inclusive. I was just curious. It, it seems like we ought to be leasing the, the the property right and the rights to have the facility there. I just didn't see it in here, so I was curious about that. Oh yeah, there's an agreement. Thank you. We, have, we have some. Uh, an example would be um, Oakley Oakley Park. We have various. There's. Okay. Various Thank you. The city. For the questions, okay. Mr. Chair, does does the applicant have any idea what the base of the post or, or the of the pole is going to be? How how wide it is or the the diameter of that of that uh, pole? Sir, if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Sure. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jesse Gelholm. I work for Synergy Development Services at 867 East Front Street in Ventura. Here today representing T-Mobile. And I um, want to first thank staff and thank the commission for hearing this project to answer the question about the diameter of the base of the pole. I do not have that exact information. Uh, we will bid the project out to a poll vendor, likely must go in coordination with the city to ensure that the lighting is, is uh, reinstalled in a manner which, which matches the current lighting design. But when we obtain that um, poll design, we will then have the exact dimensions of the, of the excuse me, the base of the poll. Um, it'll be dependent on the um, soils and some other parameters, so um, cannot tell you that right now it, it will be substantially larger than the light post there now though right yes it'll be there are several facilities at um, city parks and it should be substantially similar to the other ones I don't have the specs on the other ones if I did I'd cite them um, but it is a wider base than the existing light standard yes and, and then do you happen to know what the what the actual footprint is of the antenna rig you guys have seven feet on the plan view of the antenna array, and I, I was just trying to scale it. Is it more like 11 by 11 up there? Like the length times width of the antenna? Well, the, the footprint uh, on sheet A3. Um, Detail one. Pulling off that seven feet, I think 11 is a pretty accurate estimate. Um, yes. I don't have that exact dimension, but um, to scale that does look like a correct es estimate. And, and then it's nine foot high, right? So it's 11 by 11 by nine feet high. The antennas um, are a little over eight feet, and they'll have some jumpers coming out the bottom. So again, nine feet is an accurate estimate of the antenna part and height. Okay, and, and, and then that's about 20 feet over the top of the existing light post, or are you lowering that light, the, I'm sorry, the, the top of the lights, are you lowering those lights? No, the lights will be reinstalled again to match the uh, current lighting configuration and coordination with Musco to make sure that, that they work properly in coordination with the adjacent lights. And I believe um, it's a 50 foot structure being extended to 70 feet. 
Oh, because I was looking at your south elevation. I see that one of the lights is actually on a on a, a slight slope. So it looks like they're different elevations. So it looks like this one's actually you're lowering the lights. But never mind. I'm sorry. I, I have all the information I need. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Hernandez, for anything for staff at this time? No. Um, the, uh, is, uh, uh, thank you, sir. We'll, we'll get yeah. with you in just a second. Um, for staff, the, is that, in a, is that a pre existing um, set of, of lights at this, at this stage? Yes, that's correct. So it's just me, so it's, what's being discussed is basically putting a 20 foot topper on it? That's correct, yes. Okay. Um, and. Uh, with the with what we're discussing with the um, trying to figure out what we're going to do with uh, Quist Apache uh, across the way there uh, to the west um, do you know whether adding that bring this up to 70 feet um, would make it visible from from that side or are trees covering it or or, or what I mean, has it become an eyesore to potential residential that is going to be built there at some point? Based on the existing trees, I would imagine it, it would be visible, yes. Okay. In, in Go ahead. Existing, in the existing, it says, it's got a label that says not visible in one of the... That's a little shack below. So, so I believe that that label was uh, showing the, I can go just one more slide over, is that, that not visible label there is referring to the equipment enclosure behind the tennis courts. Yeah. And it's uh, kind of obscured by, by shrubbery. Okay. So that's what that label means. Other questions? No. No? Okay. Um, all right. I see we do not, uh, Kathleen, we don't have any communication. Okay. Um, so um, why don't we go ahead and if you can come up, Jesse, and uh, tell us a little about the project and, uh, and then uh, answer some questions. Okay. Um, well, again, thank you to staff and to Carol for the presentation. I think it captures the gist of the project. Um, we do attempt to propose the best design and the best location on every project that we have. We start with an attempt to co-locate on existing structure, um, move on to co-locate on a rooftop, uh, move on to a cohabitation, which I think this would qualify at, and then move on to lastly a new support structure. So we've done that diligence. I can talk about the history of the project and how we ended up at this particular location and this particular design. Um, if the commission would like, I can start talking about that. I would. I okay. Would like. um, well, their project was initiated to provide coverage to an area which is currently lacking coverage as well as offload an existing site at the government center. Um, you guys familiar with that and where it is? I believe it is. Let me get my notes. Um, Miller and Betteravia, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And then we have, um, so that's a site to the south, which is highly congested and, and needed some offload help. Uh, to the, and then we have the Santa Maria and to the north. Um, and we needed coverage. Ideally, it would have been kind of along Broadway. Um, that was where the initial pro where the project initiated, and we ended up at the park, and I'll, I'll get to how we got there. Uh, we did attempt to co-locate on a, on a monopine, which is, um, I think I have the 0.34 miles to the northwest of the government center, and it was just too close to that existing site to uh, propose to fill in the coverage gap. So that um, was the exhaustion of the ability to try to co-locate on an existing facility. Um, we did try to incorporate a rooftop uh, facility along Broadway, but there was, or that there is quite a low um, height limit, and there 
wasn't a, well, I think the height limit in itself negated the ability for a rooftop co-location along Broadway. Um, as well as, you know, we drove up and down it dozens of times and trying to find a building which architecturally could accommodate a facility with um, some type of natural aesthetic. Um, the alternative solution we came up was at the city-owned park, which seems to be a, um, there seems to be several sites in the city and the city supported such design. So that was where we came up from. We worked with staff throughout the uh, beginning of the project to um, try to have a conversation on where we should go and how we should build it rather than just show up and say, here's what we have and we want to give it to us. And again, this is the uh, design we came up with and, and the location we came up with. Again, util utilizing the existing structure of the, the light standards, um, you know, and there are trees in the area. It's not completely flat, give some context and hopefully we'll mitigate the visual effect rather than going um, in a location which didn't have either light standards or trees in the area. We didn't pay too much, we didn't focus on the visual aesthetics from the agricultural lot to the east, uh, which we would have to address future development, but we did not. Um, I know as you drive up the road, it's fairly blocked by trees, especially when you're, you're driving through the trees that line the street, and that would be on uh, South Depot. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Further questions? You have a question. Um, on the height of it, how do you go about determining the height of the antenna? Height of antenna. <laughs> Contentious uh, question, and it's always a two-edged sword, especially when you have trees. You would... Uh, from a visual standpoint, if you're below adjacent tree line, it would be great. You wouldn't see it. From a propagation standpoint, if you're below adjacent trees, the site wouldn't work. It would shoot into them. So it's a, um, uh, it is something that we have to navigate. Um, it's the higher, the better. I think for team mobile propagation, if they were at 95 feet, they would get their optimum propagation for the facility. As it goes lower, you get less, less area coverage. So this was the lowest they could go to adequately offload and meet the government center. Um, is the primary um, answer to your question. They, they want 95, and at that point of the discussion with T-Mobile, I pretend I'm planning commission and try to get them as low as possible, and that's, that's how this site was um, established. Okay. So, so 90, 95, 90, 95 is ideal. So is 70 the lower end or is that a happy medium or? That's the lower end for the site to adequately offload the government center site. Hmm. And there was some consideration for visual mitigation based on the height. Like you said, you, you sort of put yourself in planning commission shoes to think about, well, I don't want to be too high either for visual impacts. So there's a, there was a balance there in the design aesthetically and functionally. Yeah, it took some significant arm wrestling, you know, on the front and on my end to get the client, the RF engineers, to accept the lower height. Um, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gilhom, um, over the past several years, um, um, this commission has uh, tried to, um, has had a desire to move away from towers and move to ODAS systems or something along that line. Um, other communities have them. Uh, Santa Barbara has them, Montecito, San Luis Obispo. They're, 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 they're moving towards those directions. Um, did you look at that, uh, at that uh, to, uh, to to deal with your your capacity issues rather than going this or did you did you only go with the uh, the idea of a tower? I did look at it at about 10 a.m. this morning, <laughs> thanks to a call from Carol to let me know that that was a um, 
question that may come up in the in the commission hearing. Um, and I did watch a uh, another item you guys had on September fourth to try to get an idea of uh, the question. So stick around; you'll see how that comes. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, the the answer is: uh, Did I did we personal? Uh, this project was initiated initiated as a macro site. It was not discussed as a small cell or an ODAS project. Um, again, since this morning, I've been scrambling to try to understand um, T-Mobile's stance on that and why that didn't happen and try to do my best to, to answer that question. Um, I'm going to grab some notes, if you don't mind. And yes, please. See how well I get through this. Um, In talking with the team of RF engineers, including the lead for the market, um, the short answer for them was that a non-macro site would not work for them. This is a coverage site. Um, it's not a infill capacity uh, location uh, for which they are deploying a minimal amount of um, DAS sites and whatnot um, with the Rose Bowl or Universal Studios are in unique circumstances. I, I do believe Montecito has one as well. Um, but that was their initial response. And I said, <clears throat> why? Why? How can I explain to them other than it doesn't work? And um, there is a variety of reasons. Um, one is that they need full spectrum to provide the coverage to, to accommodate old technologies on old handsets and new technologies and the um, small cells or ODAS only allow a mid-band technology which doesn't support the network other than an infill capacity offload. So again, this being a coverage site, not strictly in a very defined location with a small burst of traffic, um, the, the utilization wouldn't uh, apply here. Um, I do, I have been asked this question quite often when I go to apply for um, macro sites as, as referring to them and um, often I'm, I've done a lot of T-Mobile work over the past years and I'm told AT&T and Verizon's doing this, why can't you guys? Uh, T-Mobile has not um, deployed many DAS or, um, or small cell projects. Um, in, in, in their layout. Each carrier has kind of specific needs and that hasn't been part of T-Mobile's build out. Um, we do, we have gone and, and um, met with cities to kind of just, before we're asking for something, kind of talk about a five-year plan that T-Mobile has and I've had the opportunity to sit in on some of those because that's often a, a back and forth question just to try to speak with the city when you're not directly asking for them to express what you're five-year plan is and, and your network needs are and understand city needs. And um, that has been a common theme. Why can't you do what other carriers are, are doing? And the responses are, are, are um, needs are, are different. Um, and we don't, we're not deploying our network the same way. I do know that the... Um, Will you be in the future? I don't think so. I, I don't, I mean, the future, who knows? It's, it's a pretty... Um, changing industry, but I know that there are no proposed, um, let, me get, let me get my notes again for the response for, for that one moment, please. Yeah, there's no new ODAS or um, small cells planned in the Santa Barbara, Montecito area. I was kind of focusing on that because I'd heard your question and I thought it was a valid question from your perspective. It's a better technology and I, I think that's arguable. Um, it's not the same technology. It doesn't provide the same service and, um, but I understand the, the, my, the, the question, if they get it, if it's just a cost thing, then why don't we get it too? Um, 
and they don't have any deployed right now. And again, this was for the Santa Barbara area. I was, I was focusing on asking there, and I, they did reiterate that they're really only deploying them on um, more venue locations, such as you know Universal Studios, um, and stadiums, and whatnot. So it is a technology that you are capable of of implementing. It's just a choice as to whether or not you want to implement it. I don't. I mean, you've, that you've said that you've said that there are venues that you that you did apply those to. So if you just scale it for capacity offload, it doesn't work for coverage. Again, you need all your spectrums. You need to service all the different different um, devices. Um, theirs would. They would have coverage on that specific area, but the big pull is for that mid-band data, so they can supplement that with these. Is there is there another technology that is less of an eyesore uh, that would that would cover that sort of uh, that sort of uh, technology? No, there is not. In fact, the, I wish antennas were just getting smaller and they could go lower, and it seems to be going in the other direction. Um, in this particular case, the city will have a unique opportunity to, um, to have in significant influence on design upgrades because they are the landlord um, outside of jurisdictional requirements. But your question was, is there a less obtrusive technology and I believe the answer at this point, again, for T-Mobile's network, and I'm not sure if like the spectrum that people have really influences on how they can deploy from a different technologies. I can't speak for you know other carriers. I only know the, and I'm not an expert in the field, but I did try to ask these questions that for T-Mobile's network development uh, currently know. Okay. Further questions of the applicant? No. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Um, with no further questions, we will bring, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to us for comments. Commissioner Hernandez. For me, whether it's 90 feet or 70 feet, it doesn't really make a difference because I cannot make a finding that it's not going to have an adverse effect on the adjacent property, the visual impact because of the development on the adjacent parcel with the Aquistapache coming. Um, we're still kind of looking at how that's going to be developed. I think this just doesn't meet for this commissioner that to make that finding. Thank you. Commissioner Blanco. Um, yeah, I, I do agree with um, Commissioner Hernandez. Is, is there really not a lot of sort of assessment evaluation you know in terms of aesthetics I mean we've got some renderings and some pictures of what it'll look like but we don't have a good impact analysis a real visual impact analysis to the existing homes much less the future condition of the West um, and you know that that's just a really pretty imposing height I guess you know 90 feet I can, wow but I, I realize this is 70 but um, that's pretty tall, um, and I think it's, you know, Commissioner Lopez's question about how big, that's really, how big is this thing going to be at the base? I mean, you know, a transmission line size, I mean, that's, I imagine the, it's got to be pretty big. Um, I'm, I'm exaggerating maybe, but, you know, certainly four to five feet in diameter. Um, you're saying no, but we don't have an answer on that question. Um, so I, I think there's, you know, it, it's kind of nice in a way that it blends in with the other lights to some degree. It's sort of there already. There's a light pole, but just the fact that it's much taller and you got this the big antenna on top, um, you know, there's there's a lot to be, a lot left to be desired, I guess. So I'm not 100% necessarily convinced that um, it's the best way to go. Thank you. Commissioner? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I agree. I, I, I think that um, it's, it's, it's interesting that you said that you, you feel like the size of the antennas is going the other direction, which I was thinking the same thing uh, looking at this. Uh, I mean, nine feet tall, 10 foot by 10 foot, 
in in uh, lake or in footprint, um, it, it's massive. I mean, it's it, I know it's an array. I know it's more uh, airspace up there, or, or it's not a solid item, uh, but it's it's massive, 70 feet tall. And 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 then looking at it in the open space district, do we have any other antennas in our parks that are as tall? I'm not sure about height, but there are a few um, camouflaged facilities that have gone through this commission. I'm, I'm not sure about this commission, but they've gone through and been approved. I think, four, uh, I think the last one was four or five years ago. Yeah. Four years ago. Yeah, but that, that is, it's, it's a large, large uh, antenna. And I think, I, I, I don't know much about the technology that you're speaking of, but it, I would imagine that uh, there's equipment out there that, that would probably, probably be able to do the same thing. So I'm a little hesitant, like Commissioner Blanco and, and, and Commissioner Hernandez, to, to move forward with this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I agree with the other commissioners. I, uh, I am... Um, and have been for many years um, concerned about the um, the look of these antennas and adding them to our skyline. Um, I want to, you know, I, my preference is to move away from that to other technologies um, and not to be adding uh, these enormous antennas. Uh, in this case, we have uh, a park and uh, it worries me that we're going to increase and put you know a large uh, a fairly large topper um, in uh, in one of our our parks so it's going to make the park just a little bit less pleasant um, and then of course we are working on the Aquist Apache um, plan and uh, it could very well have uh, a substantial amount of residential that would also then be facing that and seeing seeing that uh, with, with that in mind and with kind of these the um, the uh, stated um, uh, sense from the Commission if we were in a mood or desire to deny, do you, do you wish us to deny that or put that forth this evening? Or do you want us to continue this so you have an opportunity to uh, put together a resolution for denial um, so then we have a choice in, uh, on an upcoming meeting as to, uh, to that? You, you can direct staff to come back with a resolution for denial. We will need findings and a resolution in order for the commission to do that, though. So okay. we can come back with that. Work on that. Okay. Go ahead. I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, just so it's a great opportunity to understand what, what you guys want for the city. If the... Um, Facility was changed to a faux tree. Would that influence, or would you guys support that more than the um, design is depicted? Here? I'll answer it for myself. I would kill myself if there was a faux tree there. So no, it, <laughs> I, I really <laughs> they, they never quite look like trees, and that it looks funky and and okay. that sort of thing. So um, secondly, if there was a, I would like to state that there is a the exact design. To a park to the north, and I apologize, I didn't write the park name. Is it Bentley? No. Staff, is a park? Is there a Bentley Park? Uh, anyway, go ahead. This this exact design exists at a city park. Um, I don't know when that was put in, but in the last few years, the, the there's there's been a shift in the mood and the and the desire um, for for minimizing or eliminating towers okay and then something that I could and again based on the continuation thought um, if I could go back to T-Mobile engineering and uh, this is 70 feet if it was 60 I don't know, five does that change anything or is it would lowering the height sway the Commission to approve it if it was uh, agreed to by the applicant. I couldn't agree to it now, but I, I, I'm not sure about the others. But for me, five feet isn't going to make so much of a difference. Even if it was ten feet shorter. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think the point is that we're trying to move away from this technology 
and obtain improved technology. Within the last four years, the Commission has moved in a different direction, and we want to improve. And while it may be costly, the, the companies were, were asking that we get improved technology. Other communities have it, and Santa Maria should be good enough for these companies to come in and bring the ODAS technology to our city. And at what point can the city, you know, say, well, you know, you have one just like this over here, and we're saying, well, yes, but now we want improved technology. It's just like every industry, we're just requesting that you step up and Im improve the technology. And I think the height doesn't really make a difference because aesthetically, the height is it, still going to be an impact, a visual impact on the adjacent property. And so you would get away from that visual impact with the alternative technology. I appreciate that. I would like to um, give some additional information as well because we've done some additional research. Um, using the finding of you want to change the technology to ODAS is not is not going to work legally. Um, you have grounds for visual impacts and to modify the design for visual, but um, in FCC regulations and uh, council can correct me if I'm wrong, but we can't say no because we want you to do ODAS instead because that is a different type of technology. Correct. And so it and I might read be that in, in the in okay. the file. Um, it was very clear that it's just an example for the applicant. I cannot make a finding that this does not have visual impact for on visual, the adjacent you property. Mm -hmm. And, and in and essence, if the if if the reason we are denying uh, or discussing denial of this one is in essence the same as we are discussing, we will be discussing denial of of the Verizon one. Then, if you want to use as a template for a denial the one that you've given us to look at for Verizon, then frankly the the reasons that you gave in that apply to this as well. So it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be the budget technology. It can be about the aesthetics. It can I be just about wanted to make you aware that aesthetics is a finding. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. But okay. no matter the aesthetics, if it's a macro full site design, it will be a di uh, denied subject to the request to go on an alternative technology such as ODAS. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part. I'm just trying to clarify, yeah. if T-Mobile gets denied, they're going to ask, what can we do? Right. And the, what I heard was a macro full site design with eight foot antennas up in the air at 60, 70 feet is going to get denied. The commission wants alternative technologies such as ODAS. I'm not going to get approved with any... I think it's going to be difficult to get approved with with such a large thing. So yeah, the, the shift over, and, and once again, the impact on adjacent properties. Um, what type of impact? Visual, the aesthetic. I mean, that's an impact. And frankly, it's an impact in, in our parks as well. But um, so that I think that's just something what we're looking for is an alternative that has less of a, a footprint, less of a, a visual, um, it less is, is less visually um, um, negative in our mind. Thank you. I do appreciate letting me come back up. Thank you. Thank you. So I will it was already brought back to us, um, and we need a motion of some kind. Are we going to continue it? To, we need to con if we're going to continue it to have the choice of a um, thing, okay. then we, we need to let them know to, to do that. I move, I move that we continue this item until the next public hearing. Ryan, do you have a date? Uh, November 20th. I move that we continue this item to November 20th, 2019. In order to allow staff to... In order to allow staff to draft is it a denial. We have a second. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. Will it be open next time? Is it Pardon? A, is it a public hearing on mm -hmm. the next? I guess I can ask staff. The yeah. Okay. And, and yeah, it'll be another public hearing just like this one, but in a different day. Just to come and get denied based on the resolution for denial. Well, we don't know until it's presented. Item number four, Verizon conditional use permit at 516 South Oakley Avenue. Can we hear from staff? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is a continued item. Um, this is a Verizon telecom tower at 516 South Oakley Avenue. So just to provide a little background on the project, although we've discussed it in the previous item, um, on the September 4th hearing, staff presented a project with recommendation for approval with design modifications to the original uh, project as was presented by the applicant um, for a 40-foot tall monopole um, with an uncamouflaged unca design as the uncamouflaged design is less intrusive and uh, blends better in with the neighborhood. The commissioners raised uh, concerns about visual impacts of the proposed tower on neighboring residences and were concerned about why the alternative distributed technologies were not pursued. The commission moved to continue the item to October 2nd, um, to the October 2nd hearing, asking the applicant to look into alternatives to the macro tower. Um, the item was continued again um, to date uncertain to provide the applicant um, some extra time to um, make the, the hearing. Um, so the present hearing um, is the, the applicant has worked with their engineer and with staff to address the commission's concern. Um, staff would like to correct the record in the staff report. Staff mentioned um, that the reason the, the Verizon was not pursuing a smaller dis distributed uh, system was because of cost. That is incorrect. Um, uh, just a statement from the applicant. Um, while cells are an option, well, small, small cells are an option, they have a couple of big drawbacks. They are less expensive for Verizon to build and maintain, but they are less reliable than a macro cell site. Uh, macro cell offers carriers, including Verizon, the space to, excuse me, um, space to add battery backup and a generator in, case, in cases where it makes sense or for a genera pl generator plug. This allows the macros to stay up during disasters or during planned public um, electric, electricity outages, um, such as we've seen in Northern California, um, where carriers lose all cell cell, small cells and capacities taken out, taken out of the network um, when it's needed most. As most um, people's home Wi-Fi is taken down, they rely on their phones more increasingly to check news updates and um, updates on disasters if there's a fire. Um, this year, Verizon has learned that traffic um, surges during those outages, as I just mentioned. Um, when Verizon has areas where such tower is not possible, such as residential areas, then they are forced to utilize the small cells. In this case, Verizon felt that the macro site was the best option from a technical perspective and that it was the least obtrusive option. So I'm just going to go run through the, the previous slides really quickly. This is um, the site. Carol, is can, I, can I ask you a quick question? The, sure. um, you were saying that the macro sites or, the, or these the smaller ones um, are not uh, able to have a battery backup and, and these other things. Now, there was discussion about basically um, putting a box at the base of each one of these that would provide uh, power backup uh, to, to them. Is, is, is that what we're talking about, that those boxes at the, at the base, or the, are we talking about it if they didn't include those boxes at the base? So I was referring to the, to the big tower. They can provide generators. I would have to defer to the applicant. I'm not familiar with that technology or how that would be Okay, we can, we can talk about it down the road then. Okay. Um, so this is in a commercial manufacturing zone. There's uh, residences to the north, um, and the, the switching yard for PG&E up on the northeast with large um, power poles off on South Railroad Street. And this is, a, a, just as a refresher for the commission, this is the uh, most favored uh, design. This is the 40-foot uncamouflaged monopole. Another view. 
and one more looking from Railroad Avenue. Um, so with that, that concludes staff's presentation. The Planning Commission may take two options. One, um, by motion, approve the project with the 40-foot tall monopole design, finding that the monopole does not create a significant visual impact at this location, or by resolution, deny the application, finding that the monopole does create a significant visual impact based on the following facts. The monopole will be in clear view from the surrounding properties and from South Railroad Avenue. The monopole is within 100 feet of a 44 unit apartment complex. Other than existing adjacent PG&E power lines and towers, there are no other buildings or structures or trees of comparable height on site or in surrounding areas. And uh, the discussed ODAS um, alternatives were not pursued. Thank you very much, Carol. Um, before we get into questions for staff, uh, any uh, disclosing uh, by commissioners of communication uh, with Verizon, with the applicant? No? Okay. No. Um, questions by the commission for staff? No? No. Okay. Uh, then let's go ahead and open this meeting up to the public and uh, let's uh, hear from the applicant. Thank you very much. If Good you could state your name and address. Yes, Trisha Knight, 123 Seacliff Drive, Pismo Beach. I'm here representing Verizon from our last meeting. Um, so I wanted to touch base on a couple things. Um, you have other design options in your packet. So when we were last here, we had looked at each of them. One of them is a water tank design, so where all the antennas are completely inside. Um, we're at substantial less height than the previous project you looked at, and we also started at 50 feet and came down to 40 feet. Um, and then you also have um, a monopine option, and that which is not fully screened, which I know I can already tell that you're loving that option. Um, and then number three was also, this is somewhat of a storage yard um, in, in a commercial industrial looking area and so we had looked at also doing a fully screened um, sort of a tower element it would almost look like maybe something that you would find as um, signage almost in a way some of the tower elements that you currently have in on the commercial properties in in the city um, so therefore mitigating the fully visible antennas last time we were here in the photo sims that you looked at you see all those other vertical elements already there of the PG&E yard and so your determination at that time was that the monopole seemed to be the least intrusive option because there was already vertical elements at that time so just reminding um, of that um, second I did bring my RF engineer here with me um, Jesse from with T-Mobile did, did a pretty good job of analyzing the difference between the macro and the small cell. Um, I'll let him speak to the actual numbers, but when we did have the rolling blackouts here just in the last several weeks in um, the northern area, all those small cells went down. Emergency services had to rely on the ones that had the backup generator, and they were down for days. And so um, it, it, where there is a true coverage gap, which we have proven in this case with the exhibits um, that are in your packet and that you saw last time, um, it really is essential that Verizon's business model choose to fill those gaps and supplement them a long time with the IDAS, because you know that Verizon does that. Um, but at this time, this particular area does have a significant hole. Um, and so the backup generator and the backup batteries that are proposed at this facility are really going to aid in ensuring that emergency services can do what they need to do when the time comes or if the time comes. Um, and so if you have specific questions more about um, any of the technology or uh, further information, uh, Dwayne Bonham with Verizon is here to answer those questions or any other questions about the project in general, I'm here to answer. Thank you very much, Ms. Knight. Questions for Ms. Knight? No. No? Um, can you, go ahead. Um, can you can you tell me uh, it, it you you said in the pre in our in, in, in previous hearings and then you you restated now that that the ODAS systems are the, the, that technology can be used here in place of uh, these macro systems, um, but you've chosen not to. And I do understand that there's a concept that if there is a rolling blackout, that those might go down. But if if our push is to basically try to eliminate um, or um, uh, or um, minimize the amount of uh, skyline, um, you know, uh, 
view uh, of these things, um, then it seems to me you do have an option. And that option is Yodaz systems that that will that will fill the. Uh, the, the, the holes that you have in I can't believe he hasn't raised his hand yet. Oh, he's, he's there. He's, he's dying there. to talk he's, right now. He's I'm going to give a real quick answer, he's, he's though. Itching. The answer is the network takes both. There's no way that you could remove these facilities that we're talking about and light up small cells and be completely satisfied. Right. It takes both types of facilities to get a good, strong network, and I'm going to let him speak because he came here today. So. Sir, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Dwayne Baller, uh, 2785 Mitchell Drive, Walnut Creek, California. Um, first off, small cells versus macro cells. Small cells are not a superior technology. They are actually an inferior technology. They don't allow us to add, they're, they're very technology limiting. Um, many of the technological things that come about cannot be put in with small cells. So they handcuff us, handcuff us in some of the areas such as Montecito where we've rolled it out. There's a lot of technological advances that have came out in recent years that we can't roll out. Now they're a very effective solution uh, for filling in between macro sites. As uh, uh, the previous gentleman stated, they're better for mid-band. They're better for a capa uh, capacity fill-in or mid-band coverage. Mid-band doesn't cover out as far as our low band signals. So you need more cells. You need cells in between the cell sites. That's where small cells come into play. They're very effective for that. Um, they are cheaper for us to roll out. Um, if they were a better option, we would be rolling them out everywhere. Um, they're, they're not a better option. Um, the, as we mentioned, the macro sites provide a level of reliability that um, we're currently reassessing because of the fact that the public, the PSPS outages that we just had, uh, we lost power to 111 cell sites in Northern California. Of those, eight actually went down on the Verizon network. One, one burned. Uh, we lost 90% of the small cells that were within those areas. The few that we that remained, it's over 90% actually. The few that remained were some rooftops where we had batteries where we could keep them up for a while. Um, that has a rise in reassessing how we're deploying our networks. When we get to the 5G, we're definitely, it's going to be more of a small cell type thing, although we're going to still deploy 5G into the macro sites. Um, but there's a lot of concern within Verizon that we don't have the reliability in a small cell based network that we've historically given with our macro based networks. But ultimately the 5G is going to be pushed, it can be pushed out through small cell and that's the direction everybody's going. Yeah, isn't it? and it depends on which frequency you're going. There, there's different frequencies that you can roll 5G over from the frequencies now, the lower band frequencies, and that's Probably the first thing we'll see here on the Central Coast is, is a low band 5G solution. And then in very dense areas, it will be small cell based, uh, very dense designs. And, and I mentioned that we have done a design for uh, Santa Maria for this um, with small cells. Uh, we are not rolling those small cell designs out anywhere within the Central Coast at this time. We've done it for all the major cities in the Central Coast. The, the power outages, um, you know, when we talked about ODAS uh, a couple, three or four years ago, um, there was discussion that you would end up having the box at the top of the, the top of a pole, and then you would end up having a, um, a backup power uh, facility or a small, a small box in five or six feet by, I don't know, four feet high or some goofy thing, um, at the base of the, uh, somewhere close to or at the base of those boxes. Yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's about a six foot tall box. It's a fairly large box, and that provides about two hours of battery backup. Okay. So so there is a, ba there is a backup it's very design limited. there. It, yeah. did, it didn't work during the, the outages that we had where we went on for days. Right. Um, 
It, it, does, it does give what it does do, um, and in areas that are fire prone, if I were rolling out small cells, or areas that cover hospitals, emergency egress areas, um, I do want the battery back up in those areas because of the fact that it, it gives a little bit of time in an emergency before that capacity goes offline because generally we see a huge spike in usage at the time of an earthquake, at the beginning of a fire. We see a while the, all the emergency warnings are going out, we see a, a big surge in usage. Right. So that two hours of battery backup can be helpful there. It's still going to go down. They don't have generators for them. So you have two hours before those um, assets go offline. Okay. Thank you. Further questions? No? No. Thank you very much. I know it's a long trip. You've taken it several times over the, over the years. I know. <laughs> okay. Um, nothing from the public, so we will bring it back to the commission. Comments from the commissioners. I, I looked up the um, height, and it really did not make a difference in terms of the finding. Um, the aesthetics of it is just too large. The location of it, and based on all the factors that I looked at, I, as a commissioner, I could not get past the fact that it does have a visual impact, and I cannot make a finding that it doesn't have a significant visual impact on adjacent property. And for that reason, I'm not in agreement with the project. Commissioner Malcolm. Well, I certainly think it <clears throat> may have a little bit less visual impact than, than the prior applicant's project. Um, and I think um, certainly going down to 40 feet helps quite a bit. Um, the one thing I, I, I couldn't assess is really the visual from the residential side. I mean, the, the, it was helpful to see all these uh, renderings of before and after from the street side and on the industrial side. But um, for the residents themselves on that in the north side, I, I, I don't know, maybe I didn't see it, but I didn't see any um, rendering related to visual impacts from that side unless I missed it. But I didn't see that. It's uh, referenced as uh, viewpoint three in each rendering. You have three different designs before you. You have a monopole, you have a screen tower, and then you have also a faux water tank. And in view three, you can see the apartment buildings and one of the residences. Not this one. Sure, that's a slide. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see if these pages oh, are numbered in the stuff. Right here. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. So that view, th that view three looks like it's from the street to the west. It is, but you can see the residences in the foreground. Right, but, but so there's no view from from the north looking towards the tower from the residents on the north side no just the residents on this side you can barely see yeah. the tower peeking out over the top there right okay so um so i i i think we're for me anyways this feels a little bit more palatable than than a 70 foot high tower <laughs> Um, so I really appreciate the effort to try to look at this a little closer. Uh, I'm just not familiar enough with small cells and NODAS. I'm no expert, so I can't comment on on really the opportunity to do that here. And I, I understand providing service and emergency and and serviceability and, and customers. So that's you know that's that's a little bit uh, understandable. So um, I'm. I'm a little closer to uh, liking this or, or, you know, approving this than um, than on the the other one, but um, 
uh, yeah, I, I just, frankly, it's, it's I, I like it better uh, from last time. I think that the height is definitely would lead me towards the direction of maybe approving, but uh, um, I'd like to hear um, you know, if there are any other questions or any other comments related to it. Um, so, but yeah, thank you. Commissioner Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, and this, this one's a little more interesting. Like uh, Commissioner Blanco said, it's, it's, it's not quite a, a neighborhood, but it's a kind of a hodgepodge of, of different zoning areas because there is residential. This is actually co commercial manufacturing. Uh, one question I had was there, there's an easement that kind of goes at a, at a bunch of different, uh, in, a, in one direction, obviously, but it's, it's kind of all over the property. Uh, and, and I imagine that would be an easement where you would not be able to build over at some point. If you, if, if say this was rezoned to residential, you're, you're, you're locked in outside of that footprint of that easement. I'm looking at uh, sheet C1 of the site survey. I can answer that if staff can. David, I don't know if you, it looks like an access easement across the site, and if that's the case, it would run with the land. So it, it does encumber the site if it is an easement on the property. So I, I you know, over the, I've been on the planning commission for uh, a couple different times, and, and I, I always thought it was, it was um, more beneficial to the city to, Kind of get these hodgepodge areas and, and kind of make them more uniform whether it's changing the zoning to a, a less impactful uh, use uh, in this case you have a cm district next to the the residential there to the west and it uh, looks like a residential here to the to the east these two small lots uh, placing this 40 foot un uh, what is it un this monopole with no um, it's just the intent, right? Kind of similar to the to the last, the last one. I, I, I'm going to have to agree. I think at some point we're going to get uh, development going in those in those areas, and the impact to those areas will be, um, I think, uh, apparent. And I, I I don't know if I could support this this project either. I know it's a lot shorter than the 70 foot. Um, top of antenna of the last project, but where, if we're in a zone, what is the maximum height in that zone? So the, the maximum height is 40 feet in the CM zone. Yeah. And um, I just would like to add, um, if I may, that the there are other options, including an architectural type feature that might fit in better. With, if that's what the, the direction the commission is going for with redevelopment or changing zoning. Yeah, I, I did I did look at the water tower and I know there's one up on, what is it? Behind the old um, um, auto wrecking place mm -hmm. over there by, uh, by those new apartments being built on depot just to the west of there. There's a there's a water tank and there's at the car washes there's a water tanks. I'm I'm not a a fan of those, but I just I, I think that the overall height is is and, and the top heavy nature of these types of antennas are are, are going to impact the neighborhood. So I, I I don't know if I could support this either. Um, I don't know. Well, we'll see. Um. I, I agree with Commissioner um, uh, Hernandez. Uh, I, I can't support this for for the reasons of aesthetics. But I, and, and part of that is that you know there's an apartment. There are, there are adjacent residential, including an apartment structure that's right there, uh, just to the north. And you know I, I've said this before, and you know it. This type of tower may have seen 
palatable there because there there are other structures of a similar nature in and around that area. I kind of look at it a different way, and that's that that the residents that live there. I mean, I'm going to be perfectly frank. Already don't live in the nicest part of of Santa Maria, and I just it's not conscionable to me to vote to make their life a little less nice just because they live in a in an, a little bit less economically upscale area. Um, I would I would rather I would in this particular case um, for, I would rather swap the the smaller cell items that may have a little bit of uh, uh, maybe a little less um, uh, robust than the uh, macro. Um, I would rather do that for the the visual element of of not. Um, of not having a, a larger tower. Um, so from that standpoint, I, um, I cannot support this, uh, this project. With that, we're going to need um, a motion or a resolution. I move that we deny project Verizon conditional use permit 516 South Oakley Avenue conditional use permit U 2019-0003 resolution 2775 resolution 2775 Mr. Chairman I'll second that Can I get a roll call Kathleen Commissioner Hernandez Aye. Commissioner Lopez? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Chair Dickerson? Aye. Motion or uh, resolution carries. Thank you. What's that? Small cells are taller than these? No, I'm sorry. I meant the, 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 the o, well, the ODAS. Anyway, the. They, they, go on, they, they go on JPA polls, okay? Right. So when you start going to JPA poll, GO95, you have to be six foot, the bottom of the antenna has to be six foot above the power lines, which are generally at about 45 feet. Most of the small cells we're building are 55 feet tall. Okay? So because the planning and commission... And they have made, to be in the residentially zoned areas. The planning commission made a decision on this. There is an appeal period, so we can... Uh, this the, is just for educate, just, just to educate you guys, because it's... You guys are going in a. I'd love to come and sit down and, and edu help and explain to you guys some of the things. You can use the word educate us. That's understand. That's okay. I understand. <laughs> it's just uh, there. There seems to be a lot of uh, expectations here on what small cells are. that are kind of or. or you know, uh, our our understanding and our expectation is that they're they're smaller. They they are less intrusive. Than, than the larger towers. We do understand, we've seen pictures of them, small boxes. I see them when I drive in San Luis. I mean, they are, they are just not as visually, you know. I have not been at a small cell hearing yet where we did not have a resident show up. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think the last one I did, we had about 60 residents show up. Um, because they, these small cells have to be within two tenths of a mile of where your users are. So they're built in the residentially zoned areas, which means you're noticing a lot of residents for each one of these, which then they tend to band together. So I'm just warning you, when you if you get small cells, you're gonna have large groups of irate citizens in here. Well, hopefully they won't be irate. And Thank you very much. All right, you get it. have a good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, five oral reports from planning commissioners and staff. Ryan. 
Um, I would like to update the Commission on uh, last night's City Council meeting. The City Council uh, accepted the contract for the general plan update. And um, cause we had gone through a RFP process. It spent most of the year working on that. And uh, a team selected a preferred consultant and brought it before Council last night. And it was approved by the Council. So we're very excited about moving forward with that that big effort so that was a um, big success for the city what's the next step in that i mean how does that how does it progress at least it was the next a very six months? formal uh, kickoff process with formalizing a project management schedule with the team and the consultant and kicking that off with uh different groups that we form advisory groups committees and uh so there's of several things that are going to happen over the course of the next few Where months. are they out of? It's Ramian Associates, and you're familiar with them. Uh, they worked on the streetscape plan, and they're out of Southern California. It's a large team. They have subs that are working with them that are, um, they have several local uh, consultants, our um, circulation element, Team GHD, their traffic consulting firm, they have local folks that have worked with the city that are with them. Uh, Lisa Weiss Consulting, they're helping with uh, economic analysis and the housing element. They're a firm out of San Luis Obispo, so it's a large team working on the project. Well, that's wonderful. We're very excited about that. I also want to update you, so on our future schedule, we're looking toward our next meet. We don't have study session tomorrow. But November 20th, uh, we have a continued item from tonight that we're going to bring back, and we have another item scheduled for November 20th. And then uh, December 18th, we have an item scheduled on that on that hearing. So um, that's our outlook. Okay. Any comments from uh, commissioners? No? Anything else from staff? We're done.